Next up at UFC 266, we have a, a really fun, weird, exciting, strange, a ridiculous fight, which I'm looking forward to. We have Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler, 28 and 15 overall, riding a four fight losing streak. Nick Diaz, 26 and 9, has not fought in six years. Coming off of a five year suspension, he had a draw, or sorry, a no contest, two losses, and two wins. His last win was nine years and nine months ago. <laughs> okay. That's the last time Nick Diaz won. So this isn't this is a crazy fight, right? And it's crazy for a hundred different reasons. It's a rematch from 16 years ago. It's the comeback of a guy who hasn't fought in five years, and it is a five-round fight. This is not a three-round fight. It's a five-round fight. It's not for a belt. It's just five rounds because Nate Diaz did that a few weeks ago, and then Nick was like, hell, if I can fight five rounds, I'll fight five rounds. Robbie Lawler, again, this is a rematch from 38 years ago. Uh, at that time, 16 years ago when they fought, Robbie was an incredibly powerful kid. I think he was like 19 or 20. Uh, he was just taking people's heads off. Nick basically gave him his first loss. He had a loss before that, but it was an injury. He basically gave him his first loss. He lost his next fight, and then he left the UFC until his career resurgence in 2013 and 14 when he came back to the UFC. I'm talking about Robbie Lawler. When he came back to the UFC and became champion. Skill-wise, Robbie's a, a, you know, a technical brawler. Who knows how to wrestle? He has a wrestling background. He was a wrestler, then got into MMA, loved just brawling and throwing bombs. And over the years, he took the brawling style, added sort of very technical aspects to it, but kept the brawling style. So, I, you know, he's a technical brawler, as ridiculous as that sounds. He's an oxymoron. Um, he has a ton of fun. Uh, he's a ton of fun to watch because, you know, he will use his technique and do the right things, and then he will get sucked into an absolute war. And if anybody's going to suck him into a war, it is Nick Diaz. If you watch his title fights with Rory McDonald, it was clean technique at range. He'll fire nice shots, and then he gets inside the pocket, and it's an absolute brawl. And the problem is he's definitely older. He has taken a ton of damage, and he is declining quickly. Nick Diaz... He's coming off that five-year suspension, and you may say, oh, my God, five years. He must have taken all the steroids he in the world. He must have killed somebody. <laughs> no, he smoked a little weed. Now. But you shouldn't do that. Well, listen, straight up, like now they've uh, – they didn't make it – It kills your brain cells. They've kids. lowered – They've It kills they've, your brain cells. Don't do it. Now they've changed the, the uh, regulations that you can have – you can have it in your system, and I forget the math. Basically, if you smoke that day, you're going to fail, whatever the limit is. But you can smoke weed now, and it's not that big of a and deal. You will but die. If you smoke weed, you will die. In fairness to the rules, Nick Diaz knew the rules, and it wasn't his first violation, and that's why it was a five-year suspension. It's an absurd suspension. They did him dirty. I think they offered some relief, and he just was absolutely like, no, screw you. I'm not taking it. I'll serve my full five. Anyway, anyway. You have to love Nick Diaz. If you're newer to this sport and you only know Nate Diaz, his little brother, Nick is basically not a mirror image, but they fight very similarly, except Nick is way smarter. First of all, he can form a full sentence, which Nate struggles with. But second of all, he has higher fight IQ. He's a better fighter than Nate is. And you're doing the Nate Diaz pose, not the Nick. But okay. They all do that. <laughs> they all. Wow. Unbelievable. Um, He's a high-volume, move-forward boxer. He has very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And just like his brother, he does not have very good takedowns. Um, he's not going to throw any kicks. And uh, listen, to anybody who knows who's going to win this fight, who's like, oh, Nick Diaz is going to destroy, Robbie Lawler's going to, anybody who has a hard stance on this fight is crazy. How you could draw a line in the sand and say, this is absolutely what's going to happen when you have a dude on a four fight loss streak versus a guy on a three fight unbeat on a three fight streak that no win streak that hasn't fought in six years. You, nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen here. And if you're positive and you're pretending you're positive, you're out of your mind. Nobody knows what's going to happen. With that being said, 
I, I'm picking Nick Diaz, and it defies all logic. Like, my gut is saying, no, that's stupid. But if I think about it, you know, the time off only hurt – sorry, that, that six-year time period or whatever, that hurt Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler has taken – yeah, he became champion and had amazing things happen in his career, but it took years off of his life. He was in some all-timers and some absolute devastating wars – Years have been taking off of his life, and I just, you know, I, I, I just don't know what that's going to look like. I think Nick Diaz comes out with one million strikes on his feet. If it ends up on the ground, there'll be some trouble there. I don't know how it'll get to the ground though, because Nick's not shooting a takedown. That's a lot of talking for me. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I just placed a bet on this fight because I forgot it was a five rounder. Uh, for uh, goes the distance, no. At plus 105, I thought that was a pretty good one. I think one of these guys is going to come out and look a lot better than the other guy. I don't know who it's going to be, like you mentioned with the layoff, but I think somebody comes out and looks a lot sharper than the other person. Um, the odds makers actually give Nate a lot, or I sorry, Nick a lot of credit because of the big layoff. We saw earlier the odds for um, his friend that's got the big layoff. Obviously, different level of fighter, but you would think five years off that would at least give him, you know, Robbie at least like a minus one fifty or something. So somebody knows something or somebody doesn't know anything to make this a pick em. Um my pick's actually gonna be Robbie because I think he's been, you know, he's looked decent. He's not like a guy that's going out like Cowboy, right? Where Cowboy just can't do anything right and is just getting beat on to end his career. You know, Robbie was winning that fight versus Ben Askren. Um, you know, he lost to Dos Anjos, he lost to Woodley, he lost to Colby Covington, Neil Magny. Those were just decisional losses. Those weren't TKOs. You know, he fight, you know, he kind of got dominated in those fights, but he didn't look, you know, awful, awful. He wasn't getting finished. So I think he comes out and honestly it looks like the sharper fighter, looks like a guy that's been active. Um, and I think Nate Nick um finds himself in some trouble early. And we'll see if he can weather that storm after a five-year layoff. So uh, I like Robbie. I don't love the Robbie pick, but I like Robbie in this fight just because he's been more active. Yeah, it's it, it's a fun fight. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. There's gonna, you know, it, it's super interesting. Honestly, it's better for the sport if Nick Diaz goes out there and puts on a show. That is better for the sport. There's there's more matchups waiting for him. And honestly, that five year layoff we talked about it earlier when we talked about Dan Hooker, and not that Nick Diaz. So Nick Diaz takes damage. Both him and his brother have like all sorts of. Uh, and Nick Nick Diaz actually had surgery to have plates put in here so he doesn't bleed, but. The, the Diaz brothers get their skin rips and they bleed immediately. So when you watch their fights, it looks like they're taking a ton of damage. But it's not brain damage. It's all cosmetic. But, um, you know, that time off could only have helped his body. But I don't know what that did for his timing. I don't know what that did for anybody else. He's obviously training. He runs. Yeah, he kind of he kind of took that layoff that you wish Dan Hooker would take, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, you know, obviously he's been training. He's been helping his brother. Um, but training – to help somebody in training for a fight are very different things. He's been running marathons, triathlons, whatever it is. Like we have to assume he's in shape. I'm going to assume he's going to be a step behind for a round or two, but even Nick Diaz's volume, a step behind his chin should be good. So Robbie Lawler is going to land some shots because his timing will be more clean, but Nick Diaz's chin should be good. It's taken no damage in five years. So ton of fun. DraftKings drew a line in the sand. They picked the winner. It's not a pick them as far as DraftKings is concerned. They went $8,300 on Robbie Lawler. And honestly, if I'm putting one in my lineup, Nick Diaz is the better value, 7000 something. He throws 200 million strikes in a fight. I already played the more, more on Monkey Knife Fight. Um, so I threw a, threw a little bit on that. It is a five-round fight. And as powerful as Robbie Lawler is, he's basically a stationary target at times. And Nick Diaz is just going to let those hands fly. So I took the more and more. What do you think about that line? Yeah, five rounds, you got to go more and more probably. Because the guys, these guys are both just tough as shit. So. Yeah, super tough. The 81 actually worries me more than the 121. But we'll see what happens. We own picks.com slash MKF. It is a ton of fun, super easy. You get an instant deposit match with promo code WWP. All you need to do is say more or less than the strike line you see on the screen, and you can two and a half times your money all the way up to 25 times your money. Ton of fun, super easy. We on picks.com slash MKF.